this is Ling Chi um, brush painting for beginners. Today we're going to do a firework that to honor 4th of July. And um, it's a, a very fun subject and very relaxed and uh, free. Um, we have just got a, in a batch of black and navy uh, shun paper. And this time we got this batch. It's a little bit on the thicker side. So we were able to do it wet on wet without falling apart. If you have some um, other navy black shun uh, or navy shun or black shun um, that very thin, then you need to watch out for it fall apart when you are doing this particular subject. Brushes, I have a large brush, <clears throat> um, full lotus. You can use large flow, super flow. And I have a regular flow brush. And then I have a happy dot align brush. So these are the three brushes I'm going to use. On this particular subject today, that a little bit more complicated is the color. And while we are talking about color, and there is a lot of confusion about white. There are so many different whites. And then we're going to talk about white today. And then uh, each white, what does it do for you? And then you can also see my demo. Because we're doing on the dark background, so we need to kind of have variation of different kind of white to show the depth on this dark background. So we're going to use two different kind of white. One is gouache white. And then if you have a watercolor like bright light light or um, uh, Marie's, you can also use their white or, uh, or any other gouache white. The, the trouble with the <clears throat> regular watercolor white, they're just too transparent, won't work for this particular subject. The other is bleed proof white, which is very thick, opaque. And then we'll, these two whites marrying together will show the depth of the, on the dark paper. <clears throat> and then we also use stone green and stone blue. They are also opaque color. And I prefer these jars ones that we sell quite a bit lately. And then the tube color in the watercolor bright light set or Marie's set because they are much more intense. Again, we're going to do wet on wet, so the intense color will help you to, to show up better. And then um, we also using this <coughs> pearlescent color. Pearlescent color, we're particularly going to use the gold the purple, and then the blue. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and we will use bright lights, yellow, mid yellow, vermilion, and red, four colors. And then I will show you how Am I going to prepare the color for you? On this flower set, I'm going to do squeeze out the gouache white at two different places. I'm also going to share out the bleed pool white. 
in two different places. The first two whites, I will leave it alone as um, not mixing with any other color. The second, the bleed proof white and then gouache white, I'll add yellow to it. So this is squash yellow. And then with the bleed proof white, yellow and um, I think usually I would use the gouache on the bottom and then tip with bleed proof white. So this will show the depth. And then this too, I'm going to do vermilion, vermilion by itself. And then the vermilion by itself is not intense enough. So I'm mixing a red in the bright light color and mid yellow to get a brighter uh, orange which is the center of the fire You can see this two tone are uh, uh, different. This vermilion is a little bit lighter. Sometimes it doesn't show. So then I have this brighter red with um, mid yellow. And then I will have The stone blue, you can use the jar. If you use from the tube, you're going to need quite a bit and thick. And then the stone green. Before I start paint, and I will give you a concept that I have pre-done. So this is done on the navy blue. And then I drop some ink on the background. This one is on black shed. And I personally prefer the navy blue one better. So you can look at the navy blue one. There's actually two cluster on the intense color where the center of the firework is. 
one on the top, one on the bottom. So these are two clusters. And each, you know, apparently after you're done, each thing is going to be different because it's very spontaneous. But it's that's the general idea. And um, I prepare the paper ahead of time. I wet around my firework is going to be, and then I drop some ink in the background so the, the, the sky has different tones. And I will show it to you after I finish doing this and what is going, how, it, how do you do that. So I'm going to show it to you with a flow brush. So if I just do the um, vermilion and this bright vermilion, which I mixed red with the um, mid yellow, if I just do it right on the paper, it's hard to show the variation. But if I um, use a little gouache white, as a base. Then if I do the vermilion on the top, then it will show off better. So then we're going to start to do the cluster of the um, flat, like the main uh, firework right on the top, and which I will do like what I just did in the center, which this is the transparent wash white and then I would drop some vermilion with the bright vermilion as center that's my cluster this is all I'm using flow brush so I'm loading some gouache white with yellow and some gouache white and I'm, and then I dip into bleed proof white and mix. So when I do this, think about like you are doing a mum. So a lot of you have done the mum before. So it's like from center.
So I'm now focused on my second cluster here. So when you do it, just thinking about your, this is the center of the flower. So I had the yellow and now I'm trying to do completely white over that. So on here, I have a little one. Again, I'm using the center. thinking about like I'm paint, painting a daisy or um, mums. So this is pretty much the base of my, my flower. And then now I'm going to use this full loader brush. The reason I'm using this is I wanted to have the drop of orange bigger than my white. So I'm loading the orange so you can see when the um, brush is bigger so you can see them Also one there's some wet area so I have some orange will be dropping into this area. This sequence in this kind of things and I show it to you. So you're just loading the brush and then you're you're clicking the brush against the another brush to create splatter. Splash. Okay. And then on this top and then the bottom have some stone green this area on this. So it's usually it's not that intense and so I'm kind of wet a little bit. So in these background thing is that you kind of want to make sure that they are not, they don't show the 
they don't they don't show the stroke so you want to soften on the edge so this is a bigger area and then down below So I'm soft and fading it away. And then the same effect on the stone blue. So they are fading away. It's like these residue of firework. And you are also are going to use these um, pearlescent color. So I'm going to choose some blues and purples right now. So make sure that they don't show the, the stroke so it's all soft. some purple. So I softened it up. And I have some gold. Let's blush a little bit. Okay, now we're going into major white splash. And I will use both small and large brush to get different kind of effect. So first I'm using the big brush. I'm loading gouache as well as bullet proof.
So one of the purposes I wanted to have enough white dots. So in case that I have too many of these spikes out. So I soften it up too. Why is some more orange showing on the bottom? After the orange. I want the white showing on the top of orange. So um, we will wait until dry before we finish the detail. So I have a painting on the side that I will do some detail for you. This is a small painting I did earlier. So what I want to do is I want to use a um, line brush to add some detail on these sparkles coming down. Maybe I, I, so I use yellow and uh, bleed proof white and load it up. And then what I do is I add a little bit iridescent gold. So here is the host and here is the guest. And then that's how I finish. And I also want to show you how did I do the this ink on the background. So I wet You can see that you need some paper has some body to it. So if you have a somewhere you got some thin navy blue shirt or black shirt it won't work because it's going to fall apart on you
Then I have some ink. Then you can just drop in here. Outside in. So this is how I prepare the dark background. So um, I'm going to show you the finished piece one more time. So have fun and uh, happy 4th of July. Artists prefer not or not go through the wet mounting process. Of course, the wet mounting will be the most ideal way to finish a piece of artwork. But we just did the firework on navy blue shun. This particular blue shun is a heavier shun paper. So any kind of heavier shun paper, you can uh, do similar uh, things. That what I did is that I had a piece paper underneath the underneath the painting and then I folded over this is more berry paper so it has a lot of body to it in case my color runs and I set my iron to medium to low and I press it on the back to iron it flat. Then this is ready to fray. To let you show, so I have a piece of white 11 by 17 copy paper and I just place it here and I can tag it on this particular paper and then it's ready to give it away as a present or sell it or frame it. So this is one way I'm showing it to you that uh, I'm very against about wet uh, dry mount because dry mount a lot of time is um, create creases you can never reverse. So I would either wet mount or if you paint on heavy paper, any paper has more body to it, you can iron it without having to wet mount. Mm -hmm.